reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. When you hear a word from my mouth, you shall warn them for me. If I say to the wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not warn him or speak out to dissuade him from his wicked conduct so that he may live, the wicked man shall die for his sins, but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, on the other hand, you have warned the wicked man, yet he has not turned away from his evil nor from his wicked conduct, then he shall die for his sin, but you shall save your life. If a virtuous man turns away from virtue and does wrong, when I place a stumbling block before him, he shall die. He shall die for his sin, and his virtuous deeds shall not be remembered. But I will hold you responsible for his death if you did not warn him. When, on the other hand, you have warned a virtuous man not to sin, and he has in fact not sinned, he shall surely live because of the warning, and you shall save your own life. Verum Domini. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all ye nations. Glorify him, all ye peoples. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Dominus Bobiscum, et un spiritu tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum, Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus went around all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the labors are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out labors for this harvest. Then he summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. Verbum Domini,
All of us are at different places in our walk with God, in the spiritual life. There are some out there who are considering becoming Catholic, becoming Christian. You're looking in. There are some who are just recently converted. Others have been in the church for many years and have contributed greatly to the service of the church and are people of, of prayer. But wherever we're at in the Lord, the service can often become overwhelming. Over time, we get exhausted. We become tired. You know, and we think, how can I do this? How can I continue forward? I'm weak. You know, there's the, the conditions around me are adverse. How do I continue forward? Well, today's saint shows us how. Here is a man of pure weakness, thin, with a, a very emaciated look about him. But yet, God was his strength. This is Saint John Vianney. And through him, the God worked powerfully. He converted hundreds of thousands of souls. But this man was, was very strong in his faith, his love, and his hope. And so today we're going to look at his life and see where, where we can grow in the power of God. How we can, in our weakness, become strong in the Lord and trust him that he will provide the strength when needed. Well, St. John Marie Vianney, he was born around the year uh, 1786, a few years after his birth, or I'd say about the year 1789 in France, there was the beginnings of the French Revolution. And within the French Revolution, there, were, there was a rise of thought, an enlightenment time. You know, people wanted to de-Christianize the country, wanted to overthrow the monarchy. And of course, they did this violently. Around the year 17. 93 to 1794, this was a period called the Reign of Terror, when those who were, who were revolutionaries sought to destroy the church if the church did not conform to their ways. So they went about pillaging, vandalizing churches, convents, monasteries, burning them down, and even worse, apprehending sisters, brothers, and clergy. Many of them were executed. So there were many faithful clergy, but lay faithful as well and religious, who had to go into hiding. There were also some who, who, who kind of joined a, a national church, a schism there. You know, they, they, they consented to these false ideologies so that they can be accepted, so that they would not be hurt in any way. But the family of St. John Vianney was very faithful, even, even in that inverse time. They were hidden. You know, I, talk, I, I mentioned this adversity, and you know, I spoke about it the other day, you know, because these things can occur again. And in some ways, we're seeing the beginnings of that. People who want to overthrow the church. We're seeing persecutions. We're seeing vandalism in churches. In fact, there was one Sunday night in uh, Weymouth, Massachusetts. Someone attempted to burn the church, to set two fires on it. And, they, and already they are saying that it is arson. So, again, don't mean to get sidetracked, but be careful who you put into office, who you vote for. 
because we don't want to see another French Revolution because it could get violent. We're seeing a little bit already. So anyway, back to St. John Vianney. So his family was in hiding. Okay, um, there, there were other families there, sort of a, a community, small communities. And they would often take in some of the priests who were in, in hiding. And there, um, you know, they were able to have mass. Um, the, the children and the families, uh, very often and, and, and every day, it was very common for them to have, uh, have little Bible studies, to talk about the lives of the saints. You know, they would discuss catechesis and church teaching and things like that. You know, so it, it was, it was uh, communities that were, that were strong in, in love of the Lord. You know, but, but, and, and growing strong in faith. And for young St. John Vianney, these, the, the, the saints, the, the, the priests who did not consent to, to the government or, or to the revolutionaries were his heroes. So he looked up to them. And so there, with, with the teaching in the home, with seeing good examples, learning about the lives of the saints, there is the, the faith is being generated in, in him, this, this weak boy, this poor, poor in stature, not very strong. So life goes on, continues. He, didn't, he wasn't able to make his first communion until he was about nine years old. Later on, his faith only increased, his love of the Lord. But he wasn't very smart either. You know, things, you know, and intelligence and academics and scholarship and things like that didn't come natural for him. He had to work really hard. So the time came for him to want to study for the priesthood. This was very difficult, but he did it anyway worked hard. Well, the studies were interrupted because um, at the time, you know, uh, N Napoleon stepped in and mandated that, uh, that young men join the army. He was eventually uh, recruited and put in place there, but he, w he wasn't strong enough. And one day while they were marching out in the woods or somewhere, he, he fell ill. He, he couldn't walk anymore. He was too tired just didn't have the stamina to continue forward. So, you know, a family picked him up, people uh, there, and they, you know, uh, kind of hit him. You know, eventually, uh, he, he was considered a deserter, but eventually, you know, there were many other deserters, but then um, they, they passed a law where the, deserter, the deserters were excused from their military service and, uh, you know, exonerated. So right after that, he went back to study for the priesthood, Again, this was quite difficult for him. Barely made it through, you know, through, of course, with the grace of God. Then after a time, he was sent by, by the bishop to a place called Ars. Okay, and there he goes, you know, man of, of great faith. Of course, again, not very strong, not the smartest. And he's on his way there and thinking about the Lord, and he encounters a, a young boy because he's, He's trying to find the place. And, and, the, and, the, and he tell, asks the boy, he says, where's ours? Can you point me in the direction of ours? And so the, the boy says, okay, yeah, gives him directions. It's here, go here, there, and all that. And then beyond, St. John Vianney says, well, you've shown me the, the path to ours. I will now show you the path to heaven. And that's what the rest of his life would look like. He would show people the path to heaven. He was very committed to that. And as soon as he went came to ours, he found that there was, there was, there was people weak in faith. You know, they were, they were distanced from the church. Very few people were attending mass. So this was his goal here, is to bring people back into the church, to, to get them to return to mass again. So he did this, of course, by his prayer, by his own penance, his sacrifices, which were, were very strict, you know, he'd, he'd spend long hours in prayer in those, those early days, fasting, sometimes only eating potatoes, like one or two of them in the whole day. Uh, and then he would commit himself to study. Every day he would, he would commit himself to learning some catechesis. He'd give himself his own catechesis. So as, as the time went on, he was there going and talking to people, visiting the sick, going out, being, being friendly and loving, bringing God's, the, the love of the Lord there, because the people were like a sheep without a shepherd, just like the scriptures are saying here. But he was a true shepherd here. So he went out and eventually, 
you know, people started to, to marvel at his words. And, you know, part, part of the reason why the people were so distant from their faith and from the church were because it was because of the French Revolution. There was nobody to, there to teach them. You know, there, there, was, there was hardly any faith at all. You know, that, that's how evil it, 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 had, it had it gone in, in all of these uh, different towns and villages, that there was no, hardly any presence of, of clergy, of holy people. So here he is bringing the light of the Lord. Through, 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 through prayer, through instruction. And there were, at that time, there was a lot of, um, there, there were a lot of uh, um, uh, um, uh, marriages, there were a lot of uh, people, women were having kids a, a lot, you know, single, single parents there. Um, and, uh, and it was be, it was a result of, again, of course, because they, they weren't going to church. But, you know, there were a lot of kids that were orphaned, that were abandoned. And so he started a, an orphanage called an orphanage called La Providencia, and and there, you know, um, the, there was a lot of teenagers who, who would end up uh, staying there. Uh, of course, babies were there, and, uh, and and taken care of and nursed, and and then there there every day he would give catechesis. But eventually, like yes, the, the the people of the town started to convert, but then word spread about him. And, and people from all over came to, to this little town called Ars. So John Vianney, many times, uh, you know, he would spend hours in the confessional, between 16 and 18 hours. You know, and, and this was a, a very, you know, very wonderful, intimate time with him, with God and, and with the people. There were many, many conversions. But St. John Vianney as well, he was, he was often uh, visited by the devil and demons, and sometimes beat him up. One time he was laying on his bed, and then they, there was a, a herd of rats that, that swarmed all over him. It was Satan, of course, but every time, every time Satan atta uh, attacked him, and it was very frequent, there would always, the, the next day or, or within that week, there would always be some powerful, some profound conversion in, in people or group of peoples. So, well, as, as the time went on, St. John Vianney eventually um, passed on, you know, in 1859. But now, look, look, at, look at his life here. There's so much we can, we can gain from it. As I was saying earlier, you know, we who serve the Lord or have a, have a spiritual life, we often uh, are found, find ourselves exhausted, tired, worn down. We don't know how we're going to continue forward. Okay? But look at St. John Vianney. All right? Here is, is a man who was considered in the eyes of the world foolish. He was weak in body. But John, John Vianney had, remember, he, he had learned the scriptures at an early age. He knew the lives of the saints. So this built up his faith. He knew that what he can, what can, what he can pray for. So the Lord says, or, or St. Paul says in the scriptures uh, in, in 1 Corinthians, he says, I will, I, will, I will take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the, th the weak things of the world to confound the strong. He says later on in the second Corinthians is saying, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. These are words that, that John Vianney would, would live by and would take to the Lord, and God would provide the strength. See, that's what we need to have uh, the, the faith, uh, believe God for at times. He calls us to a work. We've got to believe that he's going to provide, and he will. As Paul says, according to his riches and glory, he will always be there. He, if, if he brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. That's how it is. But, but it requires faith. Sometimes it's like a blind walk. How is the Lord going to do this? He does it. He shows up. No. Um, so, like, now, you know, many of us, yeah, you know, things at the church or the different organizations we're involved in, They've kind of quieted down a little bit because of the pandemic. 
So remember, John Vianney, you know, he was in hiding for many years. They had to, they, they couldn't, uh, you know, have classes and things publicly, but he did this in his home. So that's what we could do now. No, this is, this is opportunity. Yeah, we can't go a lot of places, but hey, let's get back in the scriptures, the lives of the saints, good things, prayer. This is the time to build faith, just like young Vianney did. Because, you know, eventually, this is going to pass. And we're going to be out there again. And we've got to be strong in faith. And in serving the Lord, we're going to get tired. We're going to be exhausted sometimes. So we're going to have to believe him that he will provide. But if we're, if we're reading the scriptures, you know, look, uh, looking at, at, at stories of, of God, how, of God's, how, how, God, how, God's, how God's providence comes through, then when those times come, hey, we're going to believe God to do the impossible. And so, brothers and sisters, you know, whenever, and even now, some of us are serving God now. We have, we, we, we do that, you know. We're, some of us may be involved in things, you know, helping others or, or whatever. Give it to the Lord. You don't know how you're going to do it? Give it to God right away, right there. You know, sometimes, it, personally, I look, I look at my schedule. It would be Saturday, and I look at what's going to happen for the next week. It says, oh, man, this is, this is busy. <laughs> how am I going to do it? But then I give it to the Lord. Well, next Saturday comes, well, okay, it all got done. Thanks be to God. Same with all of us here. God provides. Sometimes it's even good to say, uh, look, look back and say, uh, how God provided in the past. Look at what he did for me before. Look back while well, he's going to do it again. Just got to approach him with faith, with love. And he will do it. Remember, God is always faithful. So just as he provided with St. John Vianney, when he, was, when he was weak, he made him strong. You know, his grace was always there, sufficient for us. So the Lord will do the same for us. We just have to believe and have to, have to know that God can do, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. God bless you all.